Hey, what's good y'all? It's Stinger, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Today, I'm just going to be going over the marketing aspects of putting out a sound kit, whether it be a drum kit, a loop kit, a preset pack, anything of that nature, all of this applies. And before I get into it, just know I'm not some kind of marketing genius. This is just what's worked for me in my experience, so I just wanted to share it with y'all. So the first thing we're going to touch base with are the four P's of marketing. If you know like the basics of marketing, you know the four P's of marketing are price, promotion, product, and placement. And we're going to be going over all four of those P's except for products. Because for the sake of the video, I'm just going to assume your kit is already done. Because in this video, I'm not going to go over how to make your kit. There are tons of videos on how to do it, but there's not so much for the marketing aspect. So the first P that we're going to go over is price. If your kit isn't appropriately priced, it's not going to sell. That's just the bottom line. And whatever you price your kit at is solely based on how much is in the kit and how much of an audience you have or how much demand is surrounding that kit. So firstly, let's cover price based on on how much is in a kit generally as a rule of thumb i don't like to price my kits above like 40 bucks even that's like a little bit high for me because i know myself i wouldn't buy a kit for 50 bucks because there's plenty of other great sound kits that i can get for like 20 or 30. generally for me if a kit has less than 100 sounds i'll price it below 30 dollars so for example just recently i released a glitch pack that only had 60 sounds so i priced it at 15 bucks and called it a day but on the other hand i have an 808 kit with 100 808s and i priced that at 30 dollars and then you also want to take into account how long it took you to make the kit like a loop kit is probably going to take you a lot longer to make than like a serum preset kit so you could also work with that factor to judge how much you want to price your kit then the second aspect of price is how much demand is surrounding your kit if you're a producer with like 50 followers there's most likely not a ton of demand for your kits so people aren't going to want to pay a super high price producers with like 10,000 followers or subscribers can get away with pricing their kits pretty highly even though it might not sell as much some people are still going to buy because there's a name and a reputation surrounding that kit that people know is good. So if you're just starting out, I recommend pricing your kits pretty low because if people don't know who you are, they're not really going to be willing to spend a bunch of money on your kit. And at the end of the day, pricing is completely up to you, but just know however you price it is going to affect how many sales you have. All right, so the second P that we'll get into is place. Place basically just refers to where you're putting your kit. So most producers, including myself, like to put their kits on Instagram, YouTube, and BeatStars. Instagram and YouTube are great resources to get a bunch of eyes on your kit. But if you really want to convert on those sales, I believe that BeatStars is the best way to do it because it's stupid simple. All they have to do is visit the link in your bio, go on your BeatStars, go to the sound kits, purchase it. Boom, they've got the download link. They don't have to DM you, wait for you to send them your PayPal or something, send it through, and then you have to send the link. Often, if you're bad at responding like I am, that can take a couple of hours. And within that time, they might decide, you know what, I don't want the kit. So I heavily suggest using something like BeatStars to capitalize on those sales while they still want the kit. All right, and then the final P that we're gonna be going over is promotion. And I used to not really promote my kits so much. I'd promote them myself, but I wouldn't really pay for promo. But just recently, I found really how important promotion is. So one of my previous kits, it, it performed pretty well. I uploaded it and within a couple of months, it got like, three or four sales, which for me is freaking outstanding. That was my best performing kit at the time. But a little while later, I wanted to run some promo on that kit because I thought the kit was really, really good and more people should be seeing it. So I bought some promo from a content creator on Instagram and then they just promoted the kit by like making a beat with it and showing how many 808s there are and playing the beat. And just alone from that promotion, I got like 25 sales. And there are many methods of promotion. You don't have to go through like a third party person. You could run ads on Instagram, run ads on YouTube, though I haven't found those to be very effective. And the reason why I think reaching out to somebody to promote your kit is more effective is because A, they already have an established audience and B, people are more likely to buy into a product if somebody else is telling them about the product, not the creator. Because if I'm trying to tell you to buy a product, it's obviously just for my own personal benefit. I'm getting the money. So let's throw a little scenario in here. If you were talking to the owner of a restaurant and they were telling you, hey, stop by my restaurant. We have great food, great ambiance, great service. You should come by. You might listen to them and actually go by the restaurant or you just won't, which is more likely. But if one of your best friends or family members tells you, hey, you should go to this restaurant, it's freaking amazing, I ordered this and I loved it, then you are a lot more likely to go to that restaurant because someone you know and trust told you about it. So that same method applies with advertising of getting somebody else to promote your product. So now that we've covered the four Ps or rather the three Ps, there's just a couple other things we need to touch base on. One is the appearance of your kit. If you don't have a ton of experience in graphic design, I heavily, heavily suggest 
suggest paying somebody to make the cover for your kit. Some graphic designers that I love are AO Sauce. He's amazing. He's done a bunch of my cover arts. Z4 is great as well. He's just a little bit pricey. And if you want to go around that same realm, Flower Boy is great because he'll do the cover and the animation for you. Making sure your kit looks professional is really the make or break between whether somebody's going to buy your kit or not. Like if you had never been to McDonald's before and the logo looked like this, would you really be willing to step foot in that restaurant? Calling it a restaurant is a little bit generous, but you get the point. And also a nice cover art might grab people's attention and like thumbnails. So they'd be more willing to click on your kit and that might lead to a conversion. Obviously there's a lot of other things that go into marketing kits, but those are just a couple of things that I've found to be very helpful. And I hope you did too. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. Also consider subscribing as I post two tutorials every week, one long one and one short one. Other than that, that's gonna be it. Peace.